I'm going to talk a bit about the secret history and tragic fate of Sunmis Gun Safe. And then Paul is going to discuss some of the potential replacements for at least some uses of Sunmis Gun Safe. How many people, people in this room have not ever written code to use Sunmis Gun Safe? Oh, more than I would have expected. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think I, I need to explain to, to this audience what, what SunMisk Unsafe is, but you might be interested in, in a little bit of its history. So it's really meant to be, it's just a low-level VM library interface designed strictly for use within the JDK. You know, it, this is a, a fairly common thing to find in advanced language implementations that are implemented you know, partly in a low-level language and partly in themselves, and it should be no surprise that Java has one of these two. Um, it originally, we originally introduced it in the 1.4 release. It was used for, the, there was a big rewrite, as some of us may recall, of, of the entire, of all the reflection machinery, which previously had been just massive quantities of JNI code and very slow. There's a big re rewrite of reflection. Uh, we also used it to speed up serialization and it was used for the, uh, the direct buffer uh, code in new I.O. In Java 5, it was extended further, uh, you know, principally to support JSR 166, Java Util Concurrent, uh, the Atomic and LOX sub-packages. Uh, that's when you know, things like park and unpark appeared. Uh, it was also used for other things for corporate performance, for the five people who care about corporate performance. Uh, the AWT scaled font cache and the low-level X11 interface. I, you know, the, the X11 interface for AWT, you know, again, was originally written as a bunch of JNI calls against Xlib, which is slow <laughs> for the obvious reason, so we read it all back with, with unsafe, and that was a big improvement. In Java 6, more stuff in Java Util Concurrent. Uh, it was also used to speed up some, some crypto algorithms. Uh, Java 7, more, yeah, lots more stuff in Java Util Concurrent. Um, and some other stuff, some other, other per performance work, uh, Java math, big decimal, and big inter integer were sped up substantially by using uh, some unsafe primitives. Uh, Java lang invoke method handles, of course, used unsafe. Uh, 2D rendering buffers and you know, load average for JMX. I mean, you know, why, why is that unsafe? Well, you know, it was a convenient place to put it. It's not, actually, <coughs> it's not actually unsafe, and neither is some of the other stuff in unsafe, to be true, to be honest. And in Java 8, oh, whoa, yet more Java Util Concurrent stuff, and it's also used in the Mac OS Objective-C bridge. I may have missed a few uses, but this was, um, you know, a, a, an hour of grepping through our archival source code repository, repositories to figure it out. So, like all APIs in sun.star packages, sun misc unsafe was never intended for external use. We tried to discourage this uh, we, we had this, this page was originally created on java.sun.com. This is the Wayback Machine, February 15th, 1998. I think, I think it was actually created a bit before that, but this is the earliest snapshot on the Wayback Machine. You know, why developers should not write programs that call Sun packages? You know, they are not part of the supported public Java interface. Did this stop people? No, of course it didn't. We did other things. We tried to make it at least a little bit hard to use by putting up a roadblock. But with the language that we had, that we have now still, uh, there's only so much we can do. So there's this little hack, which I'll, I'll, I'll admit responsibility for. Hard-coded names in the VM, that'll show them. Things. And hard-coded names in the VM, right? So that make it, well, just a bit hard to get at unsafe. You have to either put your code on the boot class path or you have to do the following by now well-known hack. <laughs> you know, this is all over Stack Overflow. You know, class four name Sun Miss Gun Save, get the declared field, make it accessible, and boom, you're off to the races. You know, at, you know, the mere cost of this code plus a compiler warning, which of course you can also turn off if you really want to with da dash xd ignore symbol file true. However, you know, so, so this, is, this was, you know, it was possible to use this outside. That was a bad thing, but it was also in some ways a good thing, right? The work on Java Util Concurrent done by, by Doug Lee and his collaborators, some of whom are in this room, you know, this, after its initial release, all, Java Util Concurrent continued to evolve outside. And this was possible because Sun Misc Unsafe was accessible at 
you know, a fair, at a fairly low price. Uh, and it was okay, right? Because, well, we trust Doug. <laughs> so it's okay for Doug to use SunMist gun safe. In the JDK. Yeah. <laughs> but in fact, SunMist gun safe was also used outside the JDK. It's been used by a number of projects uh, to do things that would be very difficult, if not just completely impossible, to do outside of the JDK. Is this a bad thing? Well, it's kind of risky to base your business on an unstable, unsupported API, but I think in, on NetNet, it's actually a good thing. It shows, you know, it shows us how to push the platform forward uh, and demonstrates what can be done if you take the platform as it's officially defined and then add just a little bit of unsafe stuff. So I think that you know, that's been healthy for the overall ecosystem. So, you know, in summary, you send this gun safe, it's, it's an unsafe abstraction, extremely unsafe abstraction, for building better, faster, safe abstractions. And it's okay, you know, it, its use is okay in some informal sense when it's in the hands of expert developers. Now, despite all this, SunMist GunSafe has been and continues to be an ongoing burden. It's been a burden for a number of reasons. One is, like any API, internal or otherwise, it's been abused, it's been misused. There are 379 results as of yesterday on Stack Overf Overflow. People asking, you know, well-meaning, but maybe naive developers asking, how do I use SunMist GunSafe to solve you know, this problem? I hear it's really cool and powerful and, and I can do neat stuff with it. So they're, you know, they're you know, scrolling through this is, is, is fairly entertaining. Uh, here's, here's an example. How can I free memory using, <laughs> using SunMist GunSafe? Um, you know, here, here, well, here's the idiom again, how to get, how to get the unsafe object. And I'm gonna I'm, allocate something and, oh, may, how, do I, what, how do I get the address to free? Maybe I use the hash code. <laughs> We all know where this leads. <laughs> so, aside, aside from this, which is just kind of a, you know, an ongoing cost in the, in the overall ecosystem, well, it's a security issue. You know, the fact that, that SunMist GunSafe is there, that it's fairly easily accessible, uh, that it's trivially accessible by any code in, inside the JDK itself, makes a, a real, a, a strong defense in depth strategy harder. And that's one of our key strategies for making the platform more secure, is to have you know, more than one boundary around powerful operations. And if, if it's that easy to get to, well, one, you know, if, you can, if, you can, if you can leverage a few vulnerabilities to get in, inside the JDK code, then, well, SunMist GunSafe, you, you now have all the power you could possibly want. And there's also just, the, the ongoing maintenance burden. So, the, and, and this is a maintenance burden borne not just by those of us who work on the JDK itself, but also just the general, you know, the developers out, out, out in the world. Many developers wind up using Unsafe and they don't even know it, right? You, you, you build an application, you use, you use Maven, you download half the internet from Maven Central, and you know, lo and behold, you know, 15 jar files down from your actual code, there's something that uses Unsafe. You don't even know about it. Now, unsafe is an unstable, unsupported API. If it changes, your application is going to break. When that happens, are you going to, are, are you, will you even know that that jar file 15 levels down is the problem? Uh, no, you probably won't. And who are you going to blame? You're going to blame the implementers of your Java runtime. You're not going to blame the author of that library. So because of you know, that kind of factor, that has made those of us who work on the JDK fairly reluctant to evolve SunMisk Unsafe, you know, to re remove things in it that aren't, aren't, that aren't needed inside the JDK anymore. Uh, or change the behavior of existing things. And because we've been reluctant to change it, it's become almost a de facto standard thing, and then more people start relying on it, and we get where you get sucked into this whirlpool of, de of dependence where, where it's frozen, and we can never evolve it. So how do we escape this vortex? In JDK 9, as part of Project Jigsaw, we are going to move most internal APIs inside module boundaries. So they will be strongly encapsulated. Uh, they will not be accessible, most of them, even with the set accessible trick. You, you won't even be able to get to them via reflection, you know, with the one exception that if you're willing to use a command line flag, you can override that, and that's it. Um, 
in the long run, this is what we want to do with all internal APIs. Um, and this, this is what we want to do with SunMisk Unsafe. We've been saying for a while now that we would do this with SunMisk Unsafe in JDK 9. That has never actually been the plan. The actual plan is this. So the fate of SunMisk Unsafe, this is in, in JEP 260, which I, I published last week, is as follows. In JDK 9, it will be available to code on the class path by default. It will be available to code in modules by request. If you decide to put your code in a module, you can declare that that module requires, uh, requir requires the module that contains SunMisk Unsafe, and you can continue to use it. But you will be aware that you're using it. It will not be further enhanced. And over time, broadly used functionality in SunMisk Unsafe will be migrated to safer supported APIs, um, some of which Paul will discuss in a few moments. So here's the, here's the recipe for, for what will happen in which release. In a particular JDK release, call it N, if a supported replacement for an unsafe method exists in the previous release, N minus one, then we will encapsulate or remove that method in, in release N. So you've, you've, got a, you've got one release to figure it out. If a replacement for a method exists in that release, we will deprecate that unsafe method in, in that release. And we might even deprecate it with a new, even stronger deprecate, deprecation tag that's even more annoying. <laughs> Once replacements for all unsafe methods exist in the previous release, SunMisk Unsafe will be removed, gone. So, you know, wh whether, whether, the, whether the value of n <laughs> here is, is 10, 11, or 12, I will leave to the future. Um, we will not, will not attempt to predict that. Going forward, there will con you know, we will continue to have in you know, some internal APIs that are deeply in bed with the VM that, yes, sorry, Marcus, there will be additional hard-coded names in the VM. We will place them in packages with the, the, whose name is prefixed with jdk.internal. These will be encapsulated. Uh, you will not be able to get at their internals uh, except by a command line flag. And that's, that's intentional. We want, we want people to be aware of when they're using this. Um, we would like for people to be responsible when they use it. We can't force responsibility. We can, we can only encourage it, but we can at least make everyone, whether they're an expert developer or not, aware of when they're using SunMisk Unsafe. So the command line flag is, by design, a little bit ugly. But it works. Just a second, Jeremy. Okay, so it, it, as with SunMisk Unsafe, these, these internal things will be unsupported. They will be subject to change without notice, but you will be able to get to them. Questions? Jeremy. Open to other suggestions. So it's 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 really about be, being explicit and making sure that people understand when they are building a house or a skyscraper on shifting sands. But if they're just running code and they're not and they're not application code, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if they're, if they're running code, if, for example, you know, they're in DevOps or something, well, they're probably responsible for keeping that code running. And it's arguably a good thing for them to know that, well, when they dr drop, in an, drop in the next JDK update release, uh, something might break, and that might be why. Mark, I have, I have a perspective here. I, I, I hear this argument a lot, and a lot of those things on Stack Overflow are, what the heck am I going to do? Uh, I have to use SunMisk Unsafe. We use it in various places in JRuby, but we've always had a fallback that doesn't require unsafe. Maybe it's not as fast, maybe it doesn't do the things that it needs to, but you know, and I, I understand, you know, users don't know about that, but I think it's, it's 
irresponsible that so many of these libraries have not had a safe fallback that doesn't require a Sunday cemetery. Oh, sure. I, 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 we have safe fallbacks that don't require a Sunday cemetery, by and large. I mean, I can't control every piece of right, right. cemetery that we, we, we put out, but we generally have them. Um, and, and I think that's, that's right, I guess. Um, you know, but a lot of, a lot of, I'm sorry, so one of the problems we have, one of the biggest problems we have with our users is are they breaking the flag? And, um, and what they do is <coughs> they say, oh, this group of flags, you know, oh, I applied this group of flag in my application about five, five percent faster. So all of a sudden that will be littered across every Java implementation in our company. Um, and but it's all in one repo, so it's easy to change, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't, isn't open source great? <laughs> So we, 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 we've considered various alternatives, you know, I'm certainly op open to other suggestions. I mean, one obvious one is, well, you just print a warning every time. But historically, we've never printed, we've never had the runtime print warnings in this, so that there, there's always been a, been a, a certain resistance to that. Um, so uh, there are more questions. Cliff. So basically, just accept that we're trapped in the vortex and yeah. and be done. So Paul has, has stuff to talk about as well. So we, we're, we're gonna have workshop time after this. We can get, get into this in further depth. Uh, for now, let me, let me just leave you uh, with the notice that, yeah, you shouldn't believe a word I said, and I didn't make those images. Thank you. <laughs>